profile picture.
All right. I'm good. Whenever. Sounds good. Our voices should be live now. And let's transition. <clears throat> Are you in a place to view chat too, or if yeah. anyone ends up joining? today <laughs> well this is essentially my thought process we can go through and pick out what ones what uh, styles we like you had the drawing so I'm kind of going on that as well oh, I'm gonna pull that up on the side here share your screen in Discord. Can't you see it? Sorry, I didn't think about that. It should be up on Discord right now. I don't know how far the Twitch stream is behind. Do you see it or should I restart it? You're good. Okay. All right, so yeah, usually I just start by doing an image search, and picking out the ones I like. So a few that I picked out. Um, this by the yard potting cart. And this one on Scamazon. And this one, I don't know where this is from. There's also another one. Here's some different styles of casters. Um, if you wanted to go the caster route, um, these ones are specifically designed for benches, so you can set it down directly onto the wood. And then when you're ready to move it, the wheels come down and lift it up. There's about a million types of casters, though. And then we have a pneumatic tire. Except for design, you'd have to design it. Um, basically, that one go? It would, if you had the pneumatics on, it would probably be a lot like this, where if you set it down, these ones, these feet, are going to go directly on the ground, kind of in a way locking it. So the tires would be locked the other side would be. So I don't know if that's good enough. Um, you know, worst case, toss a chuck underneath the wheel. Right. <clears throat> Otherwise, I don't know how if these... I mean, these types of wheels would work too, but they would essentially have the same issue. And I guess the only thing you'd be worried about is getting across the grass with smaller wheels. So if you're trying to get across the grass, I think the pneumatics are the, the only way to go, essentially. <laughs> Well, and, and clearance, like looking at this one that we're looking at, mm -hmm. we have some fairly big divots. Yeah. yeah clearance Probably of at least a three or four inch drop. 
um, just, you know, from where trees were taken out. So as that settles over time, every year I think, oh, it's finally leveled and it never seems to actually level. And the drop from the, so we have concrete in front of the garage mm -hmm. and then where the driveway is, there's a, I, I measured it because it seemed larger in my mind. Mm -hmm. It's an inch and a half drop. Okay, so an inch and a half I don't think would be too much for mm -mm. these kinds of wheels. Yeah, no. Yeah, but uh, if you definitely want it in the yard, I would I would go with like the one wheel, and the, and then these ones can be on the ground, and then probably just chalking it, putting in a a block if you really need more. If, I mean, if it's going to be fairly flat, I don't see an issue with moving around too much. But if you're on some kind of a hill, you'd probably want to put a block. And in the grass, it's not going to... With weight yeah. on it. Yeah, not too... So I guess we'll stick with the pneumatic wheel plan, unless you feel otherwise... I guess it can always be changed as well. So we'll do that. And then we could also put casters like these on the other side. That way when you're on concrete, you can literally just roll it. Um, you can roll it on concrete and then you wouldn't have to lift it up. And then you could also lift it up to get across the grass. Um, so that's an option. You know what I mean by that, or does that make sense? I think I'm trying to envision it. <laughs> so the, these types of casters, that this uh, little bar here comes all the way up. And then the, the wood goes all the way to the ground. And then when you're ready to move it, these things flip all the way down and lift the wood up. And then that would go on this side, essentially. Um, making it much easier to move on a flat, hard surface without having to lift those handles up while, to move it. All right. <clears throat> so that's an option. Um, so you just really just got to choose what kind of style you like. If it's something like this or in your drawing, it was a little simpler with a third or like a middle bent or middle shelf. All right. I think so. I measured the container I use for my tools and it's inches well it's a five gallon bucket with a gamma lid on top so i'd want enough clearance to be able to get that off so okay. i don't know that having a second shelf is really feasible yeah and it looks like a lot of these potting carts um well there's something like this you can have it much higher but some of these potting carts like right here there's a hole that goes through and then you would put a bucket underneath like this right. kind of so that the dirt would just fall through into the bucket or you'd have a sink and there would be a drain and a bucket would be underneath to collect water. So do you want to hook it up to water or is that something you just don't need? No, I don't, I don't think I need it. I thought about that a little bit because I've seen some models that have that. Yeah. But I, it's not like we have a back 40. I can just take whatever I need inside or take it over to the home. Right. Um, but I do, so the one concern I have with the smaller, uh, you know, soil collection you know just hitting the bucket <laughs> yeah you I use that cement you know that cement tub 
So um, the... And it's 18 by 24. Pretty big. It's uh, kind of like this. Bit. Yeah, a little more, yeah. So you just you just pot inside of that big tub. Mm -hmm. okay. Or next to it. Because I have some of my containers are, well, some of the really big ones. I just, I just leave them where they are now. <laughs> yeah. Um, this um, is the one I was seeing earlier. <clears throat> With the tubs. Or there's something like this too, where you could put a grate over the top. Could it kind of engineer that? This one I really like, but I'm not really an Kind expert. of what I had in my mind. And, and I don't think it, it, I, was, I don't think it uh, translated well in my drawing was to have something that would, so it would be, so the cement tub, you know, would sit and it has a lip of about an inch. So it would just kind of sit in the hole. And then when I wasn't using it, there would be an inset, uh, graded or otherwise, that could go there. So if I wanted to use it for something else, I would have the hole work to. Okay. All right, so okay. just just to toss more layers in there. Yeah. <laughs> well. But I recognize it's not always feasible, especially if it's going to be light enough for me to just move myself. Um, yeah. Easily. I think we probably want to start by making, starting, figuring out what kind of wood you want to make it out of. Um, something like this looks like it's made by like one by fours and that would make it lighter. Which one are you looking at? Um, oh, that one. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. Pine? Yeah, that appears to be pine. So I could paint it. For sure. You could paint it. You could also stain it. Um, there's nothing wrong with staining pine other than if you don't treat it with the... Uh, there's a treatment for it so it doesn't get blotchy. Um, do you want to paint it or you would, would you rather stain it? Either so way, I've... it's... Up I... to it can be changed at any time. Yeah. So it, I suppose my thought with painting it, <clears throat> excuse me, seal it a bit, just because of how wet the grass is in the morning, even late evening sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it just ruined the pine in no time. Yeah, I mean, you could also get, I don't know if they sell treated boards, but there's just, there's also like treatment that you can apply yourself if you just want to have it treated and not rot and have it natural. I, I think that stuff's pretty toxic though. Yeah. Um. I mean, staining really, I mean, I think that looks like, because paint, I'd have that scratched <laughs> yeah first day. so it look horrible there's also we can look at i don't know what kind of hardware stores you have by you well the majors and then tractor store A, we have a mill um, yeah actually that's probably where I would get it <laughs> um, and, and and I think they would do custom cuts for me 
So that would be super helpful. Um. Oh, that's not bad. <laughs> we also don't have one here. Just sorry. That's the one I thought looked so short, wasn't it? Right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I like with the this compared to that other one that we were just looking at. I really like the the rail at the bottom. I just don't understand why they have that second almost skirting board. Um, not this one, the other. The one that was in the garage. Yeah, that one. Yeah, so with this it alleviates my concern about um, using the handles and you know moving it where I need to go. Things aren't gonna just <laughs> fall off the front, at least on the bottom. So storage is a little more secure, or at least something. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be that big. Probably even quarter round put on afterwards would do the same job if needed. Maybe, I mean, maybe not. No. No, in fact, that would be a problem for me. I mean, I like that, you know, that backsplash idea. But the practicality for what I do is, yeah, it's not very practical for me. Yeah, and I'm definitely warming towards the bucket. Mm -hmm. I wonder how it's secured. Yeah. Oh. Bolted? Do they have that five gallon bucket um, bolted? they're using that for trimmings instead of soil.
not well not right around the workspace so having like in this picture uh, the rack i mean that has its appeal but i can also see it getting in the way um like there are times it'd be nice to have you know somewhere to put an umbrella But that, I mean, that would really wait. <laughs> yeah, I know that's a bad idea. <laughs> but um, it, it, I think, it, you know, the complete wish list is ridiculous, right? But um, <laughs> I even. And we're going to draw Let's make this a three and a half. We'll draw out a one by is like 0.75, I think. This is going to be the, the base for it, how wide it will be. Essentially, we'll be looking at it this way. This is the bottom board. And the wheels will essentially. So yeah, like three by six is going to be way too big for this. Right. <laughs> you know what? And I and I I found my tape. Well, no, I didn't. I bought a new one. Forty-eight at the base, and then if there's a little box or the handles, it'd be another six inches. Yeah. Yeah, and then so forty-eight is the width of the sheet of a sheet of plywood. So you could put a sheet of plywood as a top, or you could do separate boards. But usually, forty-eight is what I go with as it, like my first thought because I just it, it, it involves just cutting a, a sheet of plywood um, for sim simplicity that's usually what I start at and then for a width we can go Thirty be too wide?
one would assume she's sitting in the chair at a desk. Okay, so my desk is 29 and a half by 48. So 48, you know, looking at my desk, that would be fine. Oh yeah, six feet would be way too big for a mobile. My thought with 30 is that if I wanted to use that tub, I could put it and still have you know, 30 inches of workspace if I put it positioned. other thing. Yep. You, oh, height's going to be another... I'll play with my tape measure. There's a little base. Okay. <sighs> All right, let's see if I can unhide my wheel. I told you who to watch? Yeah, I think so. Um Yeah, in my uh about me section there's a link to uh Steve Ramsey. He has a nice basic tutorial if you're interested in drawing for woodworking. It's a good tutorial like drawing out dimensional lumber. It'll um, be better than the, the hand sketches I did, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, it makes it, I don't know, when you can see the scale and draw something exact, that really does it for me. Yeah, when you were working on the table, that was um, eye-opening. And much simpler than AutoCAD. that <laughs> all right so I'm gonna find the middle find a good point to put 
this. So there's half is about 1.75. So I'm going to go 1. Point. That'll be my middle. And where I'm going to put the wheel. Try this on. So that would be a base where the wheel would go. You'd have a good amount of clearance. Four inches? Not quite. That's a 10 inch, right? That's a 10 inch wheel, yeah. This would be roughly like. Not quite, it'd be three inches. <laughs> Which, if you want more, you could move this down. That's a possibility. Um, you could have it so it's just resting on it. And then that, that's, it would be resting on top here. So we would essentially put the axle like this. And that would be going across and then you'd have to put some kind of a strap at the bottom to hold it in place I don't um really need that. the only so the, the concern and if i hit one of the yard divots and it goes down in unless i'm going at speed it really won't cause any damage yeah especially with so the I think pneumatic that's tire it's gonna absorb a lot and plus this hangs out quite a bit. So if you're gonna run into something, it's gonna kind of just run over the tire. And that'll be easy to, there won't be an issue with bumping the front on that um, inch and a half drop. Yeah. Going back into the garage. Yeah. So that should work fine. Okay, and it can be changed too if we decide differently. And just double this. We'll make another tire. Come on, give me, a, give me a center point. There we are. Sometimes SketchUp has just quirks, I would say, that you have to get used to. I watched the SketchUp stream. Two center points for them to auto, auto match. Yeah.
could wing it, but it wouldn't be pretty. But they wouldn't need a full axle, right? It would just be, they would be independent. Okay. Played Oregon Trail. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. a little cotter. Spreading. I'm sorry. I think my mic has been working this entire time. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't think I had my mic coming through. Oh well. <laughs> anyway, on the stream. Interesting. I must still have my. I 
every time I press space, my mic would cut out. I gotta turn that off or that's not gonna be good. I have a hotkey that automatically turns off my mic. Byron Recluse said, can you, do you have, do you have the stream up? He said, not the entire time. It worked till I exited the Discord. Okay. Like so, when I left the call. So every time I press space, it was <laughs> turning off. It wasn't you, Barn Recluse. <laughs> there we go. All right, well, that's off for now. Okay, so the wood with the threaded rod, is that going to wear the wood or do you need I don't think it's going to affect it because it would essentially be the same as this where the PVC pipe just has a hole drilled through the uh, there's a cap inside of this pipe and there's just a hole drilled through it so the wheel is turning on its own bearing not that the threaded rod isn't turning inside of here right so it shouldn't wear on the wood. I don't, I don't think it's going to wear on the wood. <clears throat> but we'll probably put a couple more pieces of wood to hold the rod just for extra rigidity. <laughs> Barn Recluse is always going to take the blame. <laughs> um... So I think we're good there. <clears throat> we'll just put, I'll hide this again. I think the normal. Make a five inch li five eighths line. I'm gonna grab it and put it right here. So that's the diameter of our hole. And I create a circle in the component. I'm gonna grab it, pull it all the way through. So now there's a hole on both sides. Easy peasy. And then <clears throat> we're gonna wanna make a another hole. Or another, we're gonna make the threaded rod. I'm also gonna delete these lines. Pull this out at an arbitrary length. Grab it from this side, pull it out. Magic. So this wheel, of course, this wheel is a little bit wider than a 5/8 but most of them I believe are 5 eighths or close to them. So whatever this this threat this rod is going to depend on what kind of wheel you get. So we're probably going to want to add another board to the center for extra rigidity. So I'm going to draw a 
and get a center point here. Grab that. All right. That's essentially our base. <clears throat> now we want the legs. In this model, they go through the inside. Ooh. They go through the inside here. And this one looks like, it looks like they're using two boards as a base. But we could just use a longer board. If that sounds better. So are those one one by fours or one by sixes? These are probably I think they look like one by fours and at the bottom they just doubled it. They put two one by fours. <clears throat> one on top of the other to make the, the lip there. Um, we could use one by eights. The only issue with one by eights is if you get, depending on your boards, if you get the, oh, I have questions. Where do the controls for the hydraulic dump bed go? Hmm. <laughs> I've not been watching chat very closely. <clears throat> We could de we could definitely make a bushing if we needed. Um, so I'm curious: Do you want this to be the sides to be one solid piece, or do you want to use two pieces? I think the one the two pieces is probably. A, uh, It'd be easier to repair if there was damage. Yeah, but it's also going to be less rigid I think we should make make them one by eights which I'm not sure what that is dimensionally One by eight is seven and a quarter. So then it would look more like this. I think that's just going to make a much better, more rigid thing there. Might even do, maybe this portion, do you like the idea of having one end open so you can just slide things into it, or do you want the lip to go all the way around? Now that you say it, of course, it sounds wonderful. <laughs> and yeah, there are probably... Well... Well, no, okay. So if there's a two-inch lip, approximately, right? 
So it yeah. could really be a pain. It could but be a I'm pain. I'm trying to, to think what, what I could possibly be putting in there that I that I wouldn't be able to just lift up and over the lid. Uh oh, up and over the lid. Giant soil um, bag? Yeah, but they're not that. I mean, they're heavy if they're wet, but you can just dump that in. Yeah. This is what I am liking at the moment. You you would uh, do this. You can put a couple of strips along the sides here, and then you would put whatever you want to use as a surface just inside of this. Um, which I'm liking that. What do you, if if we were to run a bar, um, you know, uh, three quarters of an inch down from the top there on the open end, put a couple cotter pins in uh, just to keep anything from dumping out. Would that? You want a bar on the other side? Um, on this on side? The open end. Yeah, like um, to close it off if needed. Okay. Yeah, you want to you want to add a bar to hold things in. I don't know if it's necessary. I might be just concerned for. You could also add a piece zero. of like a wood with, like you could add a couple of blocks on either side, and then a uh, a board that you would be able to then take in and out. At will if you put a couple of blocks in the sides here that are permanent. Barn Recluse oh, likes a tailgate. Or he said like a tailgate. Yeah, yeah. so it would, yeah, it would be like a tailgate. Um, let me get the you want this to be two inches. So this would be that's that's about two inches right here and it doesn't have to be if it works better at the dimensions of the lumber uh, to have a different well at this point I don't think the dimensions matter that much I also don't know what kind of joinery you are comfortable working <laughs> with do you have pocket screws Because this, this uh, example that we're kind of going off of, all they do is put, they do straight screws through the wood. Yeah, that is normally what I would do. But I have to, I have to look up pocket screws. Yeah, pocket screw. I might screw know what it is, but I might not know that. Kind of goes in at a 45 degree angle. This is what... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can do that. But would that be more secure than the other? Pocket screws are generally, yeah, they're they're going to be better than going into the side grain. Um, mm -mm. Gotcha. So, yeah. I'm just going to design this keeping in mind that use any kind of joiner you would like but yeah I would put in pocket screws get out of here what are you doing okay um you would probably put them in th these shorter ends and then have them go into the longer ends and I would also glue it as well you glue it and then put pocket screws in for the most strength but these this is all I would do I'd move these up
Yeah, maybe There's that's not going to look as good right there, but... Maybe put something else similar right on that edge, too. If you build it with a 2x4 and a 2x6 board, you can even use floor joist connections for the joints. It would be a lot more heavy. Yeah, that would definitely... Using 2x4s would be pretty heavy. Trying to... The design for this is to reduce weight. Um, if we have any... <laughs> If you have any sort of rigidity issues, we could always add like a 2x6 or 2x4 somewhere along in the process. But I think 1 by wood is going to be fairly sturdy, especially if it's glued. And it's only for a potting cart. It's not like we're going to be putting bricks on here. <laughs> you never know. Well, I guess there could be bricks. But I still think it's going to be pretty sturdy. I would just toss them in the river or whatever. <laughs> Alright, so we want this platform. Personally, I would just put plywood in here. But if you want it to look nice, do you want it to be individual boards? And do you want it to have gaps in between? So, okay. Uh, inevitably, knowing myself as well as I do, it will be outside in a rainstorm. Okay. So, so is, and is the plan to make it cedar? Me. I don't know. That's the problem. Yeah. Um, you know, when we were talking about that earlier, I was trying to think through that. I think the best idea would to make it cedar boards... And after it's built, to put a clear finish on, or like some Thompsons kind of or like a like a real finish. Uh, not a real finish. Something that's outdoors, like a deck stain. Okay. Probably some kind of a deck stain. Um, that way, when it gets weathered, you can just put another kind of deck stain on. And keep it going. <clears throat> but if we're thinking about it that way I would make these some sort of removable slats and I wonder if one of these had a had an example this is not a good an example why did I click yeah they're just screwed down on that one right because those almost look like they're well they're really close together for one so if, there, if water gets in it it's not going to drain it's going to just sit there and well this doesn't have any sort of finish and it's pine so I think a waterproof solution would be So these, these have, have like gaps in them, so if water ever gets on them, it's just going to go right through. So. Let's do something like... We'll add... Okay, first of all, is two inches. I'm gonna have to reduce this. And this board's gonna have to be changed to match. It can hit the rod, it just can't be in the way. I need to move this down 0.75, three quarters to make room for slats.
Then we're gonna add the slats. First, I'm gonna add Just keep the same dimensions. Does this make sense at all? What I'm doing here? Yeah, it does. If I was a pro with this program, I'd know how to duplicate these without doing like any work. But I'm not. Gap like an eighth, I guess. You know, enough for water and dust. Anything else is just vacuum, I guess, or sweep. Yeah. Um, do you want those gaps bigger than an eighth of an inch? No, I, I don't think so because if I have. You know, if I'm, let's say I'm working on something other than potting, mm -hmm. and I drop a bag of screws or whatever, which inevitably will happen, <laughs> an eighth inch would at least keep them contained. A quarter yeah. inch they drop through. So yeah, um, and like perlite stuff that's in soil, that, that would sweep out. So yeah, no, I think we're good. one will have to be unique. You'll have to either rip one of these down or just adjust. I don't think I've ever ripped anything that long before. Really? I'm trying to, I mean... Not by hand. I, I have some right. friends that have like band saws, so I'll just <laughs> take yeah. them. Yeah, I mean, I would use a yeah. circular saw. I don't even have one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, why I was thinking of that mill, because I can just give them a list. Yeah. Another mill for me. Oh, this wheel even comes from Harbor Freight. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, we have one of them. I mean, they're not like a local shop, but... Alright. You could also... Like, 
just buy a couple of small boards, smaller boards, and just put them at the ends, and you'd have some bigger gaps or whatever you would like. Do I'm thinking to, to screw them down or to put them on pegs. So what I would do is you'd have these cross beams. I would just screw them into these okay. from the top. Just make sure you have a long enough the proper length screw so it doesn't go all the way through. And then that way, this would be entirely removable. If you only screw into those slats, this will pull out. And you can take it out and stain it, or you can take it out and clean it, or you can take it out and have it so it's open underneath. Yeah, you can do whatever you like. One, one thing inch I... work or one and a quarter? One inch for... And screws for that. Um, so the, the width of the boards are three quarters. So you'd want to have it go... You, wanna, you would want them to be one and a quarter, probably. Depending on if it's... If it includes the heads for one and a quarter, I'm not really familiar. I don't remember. If it includes the heads for the total length, the head would go into the wood. And one and if it was one and a quarter was the total length of the screw, including the head, that would be fine. It wouldn't go through the boards. Um, but I would also put some glue on too. That's just going to increase your overall strength for all these joints. And you can see that right there is going to hit the rod. So we can either move the rod back a little bit or we can just get a different size board for that. Um, so what's easiest in real life? For this this part right here, mm -hmm. I would probably just move the rod, okay. just enough to hit the board. So instead, of, I made this go in. I made the rod go in 1.75 to match the width of a board. Arbitrarily, I would just make it two, and that would for sure put it in a good spot. It's actually. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I was going with that. All right, so let's make the the bottom is essentially good. If you wanted to look, make this look a little nicer, you'd just buy a bigger board and rip it down to match. But I wouldn't do that personally because that would make. I'm designing this right now based on dimensional lumber, so I would just buy this pre made and I wouldn't have to cut anything except for that one right there that was too long. And then all these to length. So right now, this would be fairly minimal board um, cutting right now because. It would be pre-made. All right, I'm gonna make the, I think I'm gonna make these a component or a group so I can hide the whole thing. Now I can hide this, start working on
So now we need a height. Yeah, a height. <laughs> so, thinking of the work surface, um, I had it in my mind to be at 40 inches, just based on, like, you know, my elbows sit at 42, mm -hmm. so being a little closer, but I think with this, maybe 36 as a total. No less than 36. <sighs> I wonder what my workbench is at. Every counter we have in our house is at 32. And... Probably too short for potting. Maybe. Well, and you know, working, you know, if you have a pot on the top that you're working in, you know, you're you're up higher, which is also a consideration. Mm -hmm. But working on anything else or like seating, mm -hmm. you know, you'd be bending. You wouldn't. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> Of course, I'm demonstrating, and that's not helpful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Do you want to start with 36? And it should be easy to change later on if it doesn't look right. Because that would just be those. I'm trying to think of what I have that I could put blocks under to try it out. Yeah. Do you do you have a workbench? In the garage or anything already? Well, no. Okay. I have a little a card a table. Little metal table. Yeah, and that I could probably put something under, but that sits, I think, at thirty or thirty-two inches as well, which is what I currently use for potting, and it's always uncomfortable. I always end up having to prop everything up because it's too short. I'm standing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> Wonder if the internet can help us. Common height for potting benches is 36 inches, according to Wayfair. <laughs> 38 to 39 inches is a practical tall workbench height, according to English Woodwork. So, that, so 34 to 36 is common. So. Glad to know I'm not out of line. <laughs> All right, let's start with 36 and All right. <clears throat> So now do you want the top work surface to be similar to the bottom or do you want it to be a solid surface? Drywall stilts to adjust your height and the tables. Height to the tables. <laughs> no. That'd be an accident waiting to happen. Just make no. it Oh my god. No. That'd be good that'd be a, a good uh, stream. Drywall stilts. Gardening stream on drywall stilts. 
Actually, that would be super helpful for washing windows. Yeah. <laughs> Keep that in mind. <laughs> All right. Or a trampoline, that'd be good too. Ooh. So on this one, she this is where I don't know why they have gaps. So many. Need... <laughs> what's you... going on with those boards on the right yeah. side? Yeah. <laughs> I keep trying to zoom in and it doesn't work. So she, this is the thing with this one. She also, whoever made it, also used the kind of lumber I'm thinking of. So they just uh, got the pre-finished lumber from the hardware store, and a lot of times it's not super square, which is something you gotta think of when you're building it. Um, like one buys are super warpy. Yeah, for sure, especially if they're pine. Um, cedar is also gonna be plenty warpy. So we could either plan for it to be warpy and, and try and hide it. I can essentially build it the same way as the bottom is, how it sits inside of the top bars. That's certainly an option. What's gonna be more sturdy, thinking that I will have more weight on the top when I'm actually working? I think the sturdiest option is going to be just to put a piece of plywood in there, but it's not going to look pretty. Um, this will be plenty sturdy, I think. It's going to be sturdier as we see in this picture, I think, than what I'm thinking. But I think what I'm thinking is going to look pretty cool and then it would be I'm thinking I would make it removable as well like the bottom essentially and you could do that without a lip yeah yeah I would just make it so that this would be you'd raise these slats so that it's all the way flush with the lip and it would be, it would allow more to get into the gaps, which wouldn't be as good for the weather, but I think that would be a problem no matter what. If it's sitting on top, it's still gonna get underneath. But it's gonna create a flush surface. Maybe I should just start drawing. <laughs> All right. I don't know. I need to go get a glass of water. I'll yeah. Be right back. Okay.
Turn the mic back on. Hello. Can you hear me? Yep. Thinking about the stilt thing again. <laughs> <laughs> and with the goal to make myself be less conspicuous <laughs> hauling things around. <laughs> I think that would be the opposite effect. I, th I think you just gotta go for it. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just go full. <laughs> full cat lady, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it, would, it would be. Um... I promise you, if I get drywall stilts, I will do a live stream. <laughs> stilts in a long robe. <laughs> oh gosh, my with gosh. Sid head, that would be awesome. <laughs> oh no. It reminds me of Cru Scrubs with the world's tallest doctor. They sit on each other's shoulders. I don't know that I saw that one. I stopped <laughs> watching after the first couple seasons. Not because it was bad, just because. Time. Yeah. Yep. Barn Recluse, how's the background music? Is it too loud, too quiet? Can you hear it at all? Is it the lo fi? Yeah. Since that's all I can legally play. listen to the lo-fi when I'm working keeps me engaged start working with pocket screws I think it's gonna be quite finicky at first it takes a little bit of getting used to kind of audio are you working on recluse for your stream So now I have to make something to hold the slats in. Oh, 
D&D game. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking I just need one more Where's the center? audio thing and that's gonna uh, yeah i'm gonna have trouble because i'm i'm a whistler mama <laughs> so if i listen to anything other than what is <sighs> i guess that won't technically cut yeah whatever you gotta do <laughs> i even thought about that though <laughs> slats from the bottom. I wonder if the mill would rip that for me. That board? Yeah. Everything's going to cost a lot at the mill if you have them get it all down to their dimensions. Right. But I guarantee they would do it for you. Although, apparently those places have been super busy lately. Yeah. Now, I've driven by them a couple times. It's been a while. And they weren't even... I was never there. So that made me a little worried. But um, I heard from a Forrester friend that... They do some really neat custom stuff. So you see how that just kind of fits in there? That would be nice.
with a weird little lift I can always handle. There we go. Yeah. that was found was throwing off shrapnel what <laughs> it was i was cutting kindling over the weekend and uh little pieces were flying off the... pieces uh -oh. of metal huh yeah it was it was pleasant um it was a nice reminder to wear safety goggles uh, thank you for... wow but time for a new one So I went and looked and I really didn't have anything in the garden section I used to. Ours moving things around. Hmm. And when I went in the tools, the gentleman that was there was helping somebody and um, I was kind of waiting till he was done to ask him some questions. <laughs> and then he goes to the next man that's in the section. Oh. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> Oh, I've been here before. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I eventually went and hovered, and he was very nice, but it was like, really? You went the whole way to the other side of the tool section? <laughs> wow. Because I looked like I knew what I was doing. <laughs> For sure. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> People are never horrible in this world. <laughs> no, and, and honestly, it's uh I don't you know, I don't know if that other gentleman was there prior to me or you know, I wasn't really paying attention to him until I actually needed to ask questions, but they didn't have anything. I don't know if they're getting ready to rearrange the store. Mm. Something's going on, but their stock was really low. Hmm. Yeah, someone who will go unmentioned, <clears throat> Iron Recluse, suggested getting a machete. Hmm. Perfectly and, reasonable. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't about to ask for that. <laughs> well, so this is pretty close to what I would end up with I think cool um would you put any metal or a cap of some kind on the bottom of those front right? if there's cedar I would not I okay. wouldn't worry about it um metal is just gonna rust and collect water mm. right um <clears throat> these decking plates in the opposite direction you could avoid that old odd rip you mean perpendicular to what they currently are decking plates Yeah. I don't think it's going to make it less work necessarily. It'd make it more work because you'd have to cut more slats. It would just make that one cut a little easier so that. Cheryl could do it. And structurally, would this, in my mind, structurally, this, the way it's currently designed, seems like it... I think uh, it would be stronger this way. Thank you. Yeah. I was thinking less wobbly. Yeah. I think the only error in this design is you might have to add a couple more of these beams right here 
rejoice or whatever you want to call them to make it a little bit more sturdy, a little sturdier. Because one by is really, yeah, they can, they're not super strong. So worst case scenario, I would add one of these right here and right here instead of just in the middle. And then I would add another one of these guys in to hold the top together. And then make sure we got a lot of glue on them. Every, I would glue every single thing. Cause that's like really- pre drill so pre-drill each hole, fill it with glue, screw it in. I mean, don't fill the glue, the hole with glue. Right, so what are you gluing? So- Oh, just along the top, just where the wood is gonna connect to other wood. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you would glue each of these like squares where the wood meets and then Put it together and then screw it so if i were building this top i would line up all the slats how i want them on another surface like a bench top or the floor and then glue basically glue each of these put them onto the slats as you have them pre-arranged and then screw from the bottom up, assuming they're not gonna go through. And that would hold the, the screws are essentially to hold the glue for it to dry properly. They don't have very much structural. If you're, This would also work if you were to do just screws, but screws really do not have a lot of structural support. So it could be just one per board. It doesn't have to be like on a deck where you have two in each joint. I you would know, probably still joint. put two. Okay. At least. Maybe even three. And that answers the other question because I was going to ask if... Yeah, going up from the bottom. Which... Yeah, you could do it either way, but... I think no I like that better the yeah. less the less uh, imperfection on the top the better it is yeah it would keep these nice and clean and then there would be further fail or fewer failure points as far as water infiltration and also make sure you're probably using deck screws yeah because they're gonna be the most was weather resistant and then if you're using pocket screws um, for these sides they, they would also hide it from the outside there would be no screws coming in from the outside you'd pocket screw these around there and where, was where would that this? come through so it would, it would only go through each corner, right? It wouldn't go through all all three boards, right? No. No, this <clears throat> the pocket screw would essentially go in right here or probably further out, but I got to just screw it up. So two sets of pocket screws in each corner. Yeah. So you'd put them in it's not very good either. It would probably go in like right there, and then the screw would go in like this. So that would be like where the screws travel would be. And then you do one at the, on this side right here, and one at the bottom. And then you do that for each of these. Do that here, here, and on that side. And then for this part, it's only holding in, it's only holding the top in. So I would just put screws straight through. You wouldn't have to do pocket screws there or for this one. 
would just be to hide these corner boards. And since these ones are longer, you'd probably put three or four and you'd make sure to glue these ends because that's going to have a ton of structural. And just those four one bys going up will be enough to support the weight of the top layer. I think it would. I think it would be fine. Um, would adding in in a worst case, let's say if I get it built and and it needs a little something, would adding a one by between the upright. Yeah, along I would, the bottom deck. If you end. have any sort of structural issue, I'd probably put bracing in the middle here, because I don't think you're gonna have issues. Okay. That way, it's just gonna be like wobbly, and if you have any sort of issues, I would just make these two by fours instead of one by fours. Should I just plan on doing that? That's probably a good option, actually. I think that would probably be good. So that's what it cooled off at all. What? <laughs> Where you are? Has it cooled off? Has oh, it cooled off? <laughs> I mean, it's cool at night, but today is supposed to be pretty hot. At night, it gets really cold. Yesterday was just about perfect. I don't think it got above. Well, it's probably right around eighty. Yeah, I think that's going to make it so sturdy. I don't think there would be any issues. Real magic. Does this spit out a cut list? <laughs> I do have a thing that makes a cut list, but I have never used it. I don't think to know if it'll work. Where did that go? this looks like if the cuts if I have to do the cuts myself and they're not exact since I don't have a circular it it looks pretty forgiving yeah downloaded an extension that gives you a cut list but now I can't find it well and that's something for later yeah we can do that later I guess I'm just trying to remember how to use the actual app. I'm so used to using the web app that I don't know how to use the the other apps very well.
this one. Contemplating the handle. Mm -hmm. A couple options. You could extend this out and essentially cut a handle into it. Or we can make handles that are a little bit lower and attached. That way it would probably be less work on your on your back you wouldn't have to lift up as high so getting a good reference point here so I'm five foot eight so that's how tall I am and hands are <laughs> this is weird 27 from the ground 26 that's where the tips of my hands come to bend down at least three inches to pull up at least three inches. So I have five handles that come three inches down. so it stashes and can extend What's that? Pocket handle. Pocket handle. Mm. Sounds like it needs more skill than what <laughs> than I'm, I can do right now. I'm thinking of Give me like a year. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking of like the <laughs> the simplest handle I could make would be I even pulled up some you know like replacement handles for carts and aside from the fact that they're all obnoxiously expensive for what they are <laughs> um, I think just yeah just something crazy now structurally if we have something that I could put like a towel bar on, that would be kind of cool. Yeah, I think you could do that with this. But that could also go, you know, anywhere on the side, like even a paper towel holder. Oh, what did I do? Another feature that I thought would be nice is somewhere to, to like a just a cleat for an extension cord, but that's easy to add. That's the only other thing because oh, I could yeah. put that on the front. For sure. You 
could uh, put a dowel. Yeah. In between there. Yeah. So. I would make this. So another thing would be I would make it. I'd make it longer. It's extending that handle out, then mean I need to make a curve. Oh no, never mind. But no, I still I still might on the um the legs closest to the handle. Does that make sense what I'm asking? On the legs closest to the handle? Yeah. So if the handle is farther out and then you need to get a larger angle, I guess. Then the support legs would they need to be the, the front uh, squared part that would be on the ground? Does that need to be rounded? You talk about this yeah. support legs. I don't like think on the and it'd be okay. I don't think you have to make anything rounded. As long I don't as know how I got that in my head. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, you can. That's not going to hurt anything. Um, you might even consider like putting like little cuts like that. Just so it doesn't. I don't think it's going to be too much. As long as you build everything square, I don't. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be an issue. But. This is probably what I would do. That way when you lift it, those handles are going to be level when you lift it. That is slick. <laughs> I like that. And I wonder if I can demonstrate that. No, I can visualize it though, and that would be um, Boom. much nicer on the shoulders for sure. What's the offset on that? Three inches, you think? That's probably closer to six. You mean how far is it coming up off the ground? Yeah, like so that the handle to to get the handle level ish. So I'm not trying to adjust with. Yeah, this definitely has to be less angled. So really, it almost wouldn't even be noticeable. You know, I wonder, so structurally, if we were to have it so that it fully pivoted but then had a stop block so that way inevitably I don't keep bumping into it with my hips right because <laughs> I can see that happening too yeah yeah that could be but I don't know if structurally if it would probably want these to stick out a little more I think uh, if you don't want to hit your feet I 
the dump cart feature in action. <laughs> so that's fairly levelish. Like if you're gonna want those maybe to stick out more to not bang your knees on it, maybe. I just wear sandals, so I would be stubbing my toes and stuff. It would be unpleasant. Or kicking, you know, kicking those feet. <laughs> so yeah, they're a little farther out. What? Know how large my stride is? Not that it'd be a full one anyway, but. Heck, you could even. Hmm. Wonder how that would work. Put a stop block. Put a stop block right here. I'm not sure how structurally sound this would be, but <laughs> like the idea of putting a block right here. find the exact center point that on the center and then I should have made this block separate but oh then you, this would fold down <laughs> when you're not using it and then when you pull it up it would stop on that block and you'd be able to just pull up and lift the whole thing up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Unlike currently demonstrated, but I do get that. Yeah, that's that's what I was that's what I was thinking, but I didn't know if it would have enough. Uh, I guess if the block was big enough, it would have enough power. Yeah. I just wouldn't be able to have tons of weight on top. Yeah. Which I shouldn't anyway. Make that block separate. Now, would it clear when it's down the whole way, or would it still stick out? Um. Do you know what I mean? I mean, would I it stick out as... past this way? Uh. So the arm. Yeah, so as it folds down, as the handle folds down, the top edge of the handle would fully be within the, yeah. the volume of the cart. <laughs> if you wanted it to be within, you'd have to cut it down to if you want it to fit inside. Otherwise, it would just probably rest on top of this. Yeah, even if it's close. I just, yeah. um, I was thinking if it, as it swung down, depending on where that, that, stop block was it could if I installed it incorrectly which is a distinct possibility <laughs> now I wonder if um, trying 
trying to think if I clamped clamped it into position to test it out. Yeah. But the clamps may or may not hold that. Just to test the angles to make sure that they were. You could just put some screws through it. But a clamp, I think it would... If you put two clamps like a... on it, you'd be able to do it. Yeah, it would be like a C-clamp or something. But... Whatever they're called. Yeah. Ooh, I'm excited. <laughs> Ooh. You either have to round that off. You probably have to round that off. Yeah, that's what I was. <laughs> but that's easy. Yeah. Doesn't have to be pretty. Putting too many trial holes in the uprights makes me a little nervous. Yeah. But if it's a 2x4, not a 1x, that shouldn't be as bad. Right. As, as long as it's in the center, it's still, still going to maintain a lot of its integrity. Heck, that's what they do all over in your house for to run electrical. Point. Who knows in my <laughs> There's always surprises. <laughs> yes. We still have like the old fabric. I don't. I don't know if it's it's, it's like wrapped cord. Do you know what I mean? It's braided. Oh yeah. Wrapped cord. <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while, um, I, well, I haven't had to open any weird fixtures for a long time. Hmm. That made me nervous. Yeah, like our bathroom sconces on either side of the mirror. Oh, gosh. Changing. I went to pull it. I'm like, yeah, this is in the bathroom. But they're cool fixtures. Can't find replacements <laughs> for them, so. Yeah. I guess we could rewire them. Well, I think that would be just fine. Yeah. And then you'd probably make this round and two of them and so I can double this and now would that need a bushing could that uh, just be like a, a washer. threaded rod? Just a washer would be fine. I don't even think you need a washer. Well, you might want a washer to make it slide better.
so now I select I'm actually gonna break these lines so they just move I mean, so that's a little bit above where your fingertips would be, but, uh, well, that's where my fingertips would be. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I'm 5'8". I'm just a little over. Okay. I don't know how long your arms are, so... But this could be easily adjusted. <laughs> My middle finger came down to 26 inches. Okay, so you're like yeah. the same. Just about. But, uh... Yeah, with your, arm, with your hands clenched, it should be above that point. So the only question is, is it going to, are your feet going to knock on it? But this is, let's do this. 29 inches. So yeah, it's about the, it's the same. If I'm understanding what you were saying. <laughs> So that <clears throat> simulates the floor. So this would be... I need you to be on the blue axis. On face, that's six inches. <laughs> so you'd have six inches away from the clearance from the ground. And right here you would have, why is it so hard to get on the blue axis? 10 inches. Right. Yeah. There'd be plenty of space. Yeah, your knees 
would be about 12 inches away. Ugh. I think it would be okay. In a worst case, just make longer handles, right? Right. Yeah, at, so, at some point, I think there would be some structural issues with the two buys. Mm -hmm. But you could always just make the this extend out further. But yeah, I don't think it would be that bad. I mean, a wheelbarrow is a two by. And I could shave down the ends, yeah. Yeah, not too bad. What other features do you want? Oh, the bucket. Yeah. So do you want... You don't want a bucket though. You want to put in your your sink. Well, so that you know that that would be the ideal. But I think um, you know if, if we were to to do that, it would change the structural integrity, wouldn't it? Um. Yeah, we'd probably have to plan for it. Yeah, it's I eighteen don't... by twenty four. This could sit. And that, so if I'm understanding, so it's something that if I did this in its basic form and decided next spring that I needed, I really needed something that was lower. Yeah, I mean, we could always redesign it. Just trying to see what this would look like. So yeah, that takes up a lot of space. Yeah, even and I and I had thought, you know, if we turned it the other direction, that if it was just sitting on top, um, I wonder, I wonder if a shelf. How high is it? If we made a shelf underneath on even if it was only a half length shelf that could hold that and then cut a couple of slats a little like cut little insets mm -hmm. of maybe a quarter inch in no never mind that making it way more complicated than it needs to be. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so So the tub including the lip is about six inches and then the lip itself is about an inch. So if it were gonna sit in and just rest on the lip it would only need to be if there needed to be a support underneath it would only need to be five inches down yeah the shelf would need to be more 
Well, I think you'd have enough support. Do you know how heavy it is? The tub itself? Yeah. It's not very heavy. And I try not to work with... I try not to use wet in it. So it's... Even if it has soil in it, it's... You know, maybe 10 or 15 pounds of soil. I don't dump all my... Well, no, that's a lie. If I'm, like, rehabbing old soil, like, adding stuff to it, you know, I'll put it in. But even then, it's not wet. Because that's a pain. Mm -hmm. So maybe 20 pounds resting on the lip. But those are pretty sturdy. It's not like a Rubbermaid tub, you know, it's... Yeah. I think it we could make it work. Just take a little bit of... Thought. Like having the solid surface, though. Like, you know, looking at it like this, I don't know that... I mean, it would be nice to have, a, like, a dump bucket in one corner. Mm-hmm. Interesting. That you can, you know, just swipe stuff into. But if it's slatted, stuff's gonna fall through anyway. Yeah. We could always make it unslatted. Alright, I think I gotta take a quick break. Well, and I'm gonna have to boogie in about five anyway. Oh, okay. Well, we can um, just... We can, uh... Maybe take, uh, take off from... Maybe try again later and continue. Yeah. Well, uh, we should yeah. get the true dimensions of your sink as close as we can get them, and then we'll draw it out and then see how we can fit it in. Because I think we can fit it in and make it look nice. Okay. So. Or you can make an extra top depending on the project. Yes. Like one that just slips in. Well, yeah. Like just to set over just to set over the top. Yeah. That'd be easy. Cool. Thank you for your help with this. I do oh. appreciate it. Well, it's just a lot of fun. I didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh... Um and I'll think about the bucket, like how much I'm I'm actually I'm I'm gonna be messing around with um you know, it's time to get rid of some of the stuff in the containers. It's dying out or getting leggy. So I'll be playing around with it the next couple of days. So I'll see about, if, you know, if it's just as easy to kind of swipe stuff into a bucket or if I really want to keep using the cement mm -hmm. tub. Yeah, or anything really. Any, we'll think about that. For the next few days and yeah barn recluse is saying we can make an extra top you can make interchangeable tops so you can have a sink one or you can have a flat one or you can have one that has a whole bunch of wider slats that's something to think about but anyway i have to get going so and so do you apparently pdf yeah can you send me a pdf of this image yes that would yeah, be awesome that. not a problem all right well well thanks again yeah you're welcome until next time <laughs> see you later see you later <laughs> bye bye